Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So, this is part three of my Clan Wars vlog, my journey into the realms of the top tours. Alas, I didn't get to play many games in PYS number three. I did make a relatively good showing on day one against Tat and Astra, but I mainly sat on the bench for day two. And well, day three, unfortunately we were not able to obtain a full team for the final day and to say we got steamrolled by this would be an understatement. Nevertheless, PYS number three, let's be honest here, wasn't about Vale's second team. My team wasn't even about me, it was all about our first team. On day three, they had the very tough task of facing both Imor's top team, who were riding high, and of course, the favourites, Endgame. And boy, did our first team pull out all of the stops! For those of you lucky enough to watch the grand final on day three, Vale versus Endgame, on Rolling Swarm screen, then you would have witnessed some truly epic gameplay. And due to my lack of playing in PYS number 3, Alpha from the first team has kindly sent me across the replays of Vale vs Endgame for you to enjoy from a more personal point of view. This time in this vlog I'm not going to go through shot by shot the games that we played, but I'm going to talk about the learning curve and how it's helped me as a player to see things quite differently. I've said in previous Clan Wars vlogs that these types of tours are nothing like quick tours and there is a stark comparison between them if I'm being honest. QTs are fun and rather quick. In a vast majority of QTs there's no real defined strats as such and they tend to be slightly more aggressive and therefore quicker to play. That's not to say Clan Wars isn't aggressive, because sometimes the strat and the caller demands for that raw aggression, but they are more intense, more strat orientated, and more player or tank focused, and it's the latter part that really takes some getting used to. Whilst I am part of Vale's second team, we do, and we have, face some pretty tough competition and whilst we don't train generally we make up our strats on the day the overall plan is to still complete and carry out the task and the role that you have been given. In almost every aspect of the game players are focused on damage and kills. In fact the majority of the videos on YouTube are about that part of the game, damage and kills. Whereas Clan Wars, especially at this level, is not all about that, not really. Of course, damaging kills is part and parcel of the game, even Clan Wars. But the most important thing that I have found at this level is doing the role you have been given. Making sure you don't stray out of position. And above all, focus on the calls that are being made. Now some strats call for one of you to be the bait. You're there to entice the enemy and there is a great chance you might get wrecked. The temptation to run away, as in a regular game, is very difficult to suppress, but suppress it you must because whilst you're getting wrecked, your team is doing something somewhere else in order to try and gain an advantage. Aside from doing your role, I would say that some of the biggest changes is making sure that you stay safe or as safe as you possibly can. Trying to move without getting light bulbs pop up everywhere. And above all, listening to the calls that are being made. I have found one of the most important parts of Clan Wars, and no doubt, the most important role is that of the caller. The person who literally directs the team. Now, in my team, we're not micromanaged. It's an overall call because the players are good enough to be expected to know what to do and use their brain cells. Communication is key and is 
it's totally expected that there is a steady flow of information coming in from the team. We're trying to understand what the enemy tanks are, where they are, sorry, how much HP those tanks have left, how many shots they are, and such like. This helps with the focus fire aspect, something a lot of the commentators talk about. As a viewer watching from afar, it all seems pretty slick and straightforward. It's just a bunch of super unicorns all shooting the same target. But in reality, it's a lot more complex than that. In most games, the most isolated or the most vulnerable tank is the one that is called out. Vulnerability doesn't just mean the one out of position, it can also mean the one with the least HP or the one that presents the biggest threat but is an easy target, such as like a 113. However, you will tend to find this is why the mouse is rarely focused initially, because it takes out a lot of guns to focus a tank that, in real terms, isn't that dangerous. Certainly not as dangerous as, say, a Yo or an IS-4 or a 113. There is constant chatter during the game, with information coming left, right and centre, all designed to aid in focusing a particular tank or in the timing of a particular push. With regard to pushing, wow, that's a whole different ball game. When the call comes, you have to summon up all your willpower just to go, because you know you will get smacked. And if this was a regular game, then you would be doing your best to conserve your HP. In Clan Wars, you just need to go. Trust in the call and trust in yourself, trust in the focus fire, and above all, trust in the push. Yes, you may be that one that loses HP, and you may be that one that gets wrecked, but the idea is to overwhelm the enemy and catch them off guard. When a push is well executed, it looks and feels awesome. When it goes slightly wrong, however, it can be an utter disaster. Sometimes, when you're pushing, you get caught up in the melee, and it's very difficult to focus on the tank being called. What with armoured beasties literally all over the place, with guns flying left, right and centre. I'm not going to lie, such moves are exhilarating, to say the least. They get the blood pumping, and... If you're like me, you tighten up ever so slightly on your device. Experiencing the enemy crumble under the weight of your push is truly something to experience. However, in Clan Wars, chances are you will also experience your enemy doing the same to you. And being on the receiving end of such a push is no picnic. I remember in POS number one and number two being on the receiving end of both a raid and a loca push and it's devastating. You feel completely helpless against the tide of armour that is rushing towards you, powerless to stop it, despite your best efforts. And it is then that the reality of playing against the very best hits home, and it hits hard. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome to experience, but it's also rather demoralising. The harsh reality that whilst your team and yourself may have done particularly well when facing the top clans in the game, you can be made to look like an overly enthusiastic amateur. Something that I am actually, let's be honest. I personally have loved every single second of this journey and it's not over for me, well not just yet. We still have PYS number 4 that is currently underway and we're doing well so far. We've got into day 2, but our day 2 group is tricky indeed. What with A1N1, ESOP and LOCA, all pretty, pretty formidable. Anyway, PYS number three won't be overly memorable for my little games, because the main event wasn't around my team, but completely belonged to our first team, who, despite the odds, turned over Endgame in fantastic style. Yes, the overall round was close going to a decider, but what a display both clans showed, and I am certainly filled with pride knowing that I'm part of Vale, a clan that many have underestimated, but I for one feel they have shown they really do belong in the top eight.
and possibly even higher. I also want to offer my full support for the NA clan that I'm in, although unfortunately I haven't been able to play NA for some time now. On NA I'm in the clan Joker. Now I joined Joker quite a while back, in fact before it became Joker, and I've watched that team grow to the powerhouse that it now is under the leadership and direction of Assassin. And you know what? It's been an honour to watch that. I have rolled out with them a few times, mainly in QTs and in platoons, and as I've said, watching them progress ever upwards has been a truly fantastic thing to see. I know they will do well on the NA Clan War, Clan War circuit, and I for one can't wait to see them in action in the pro side of the Autumn Tour, and no doubt in the Blitz Cup. Anyway, I've been Fuji. That has been my Clan Wars vlog number three. I've got one more to go. Clan Wars vlog number four. That'll come later though, because we're still in number four. Work on me to comment and everything below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.